Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe. No coffee this time. I'm in the middle of editing actually. Alright, it's a quick video. So I'm doing this video for Paul. He pretty much, you know, is making a pie. Because, you know, who the fuck doesn't like pie? Uh, there's a thing about this uh, particular video that I wanted to like discuss with you guys really quickly. And But for this video, pretty much what I want to talk about is this guy, the dynamic processing. Now if you go to your pull down menu, you pull down menu here, you go down to amplitude compression, you go dynamic processing, right? And that's how you get that guy. So if we listen to this uh, part of like the video, you can hear like he speaks in a more normal vo volume, right? Stuff. So for that, I'm gonna make some pie. And uh, a couple years back, I did a how to make an apple pie Thanksgiving video, which I'm sure all of you guys have already seen as well. But I all right, so that's kind of a, his normal voice, right? And if we go more to this area over here, Two ounces of unsweetened cooking chocolate. This is actually six ounces total, but we're making two pies today. And then of course the aforementioned vanilla. So yeah, when he gets closer to like the ingredients, he like lowers like the volume of his voice, right? And uh, this happens throughout the whole video, right? Like depending on what he's doing. So we need to like, use this filter, the dynamic processing, and it helps us out to pretty much balance everything out, right? So I'm going to show you um, how I do that with this guy. So if I just play right now. For the pie crust, it's very important that you have homemade pie crust if you want everything to taste really good. So pretty much this works the same as this guy right here, right? So you know, like the meter here on the side? And like you did it yourself and not like you went and just bought it. So the bottom section of this filter right here, just think of it as a sideways meter of this guy right here on the side, right? It's literally the same shit. Out at the store or something like that. Main ingredients are flour, uh, some salt, of course, and there's... So as this goes up here on the bottom meter, it's equivalent to what's going up here on the side. The only difference is this meter pretty much measure how much volume you're going to be increasing or reducing uh, depending on what you select on this like um, on this like volume meter here. I don't, I'm not exactly sure we call this fucking blue light, but pretty much what you do in this case, say if like you grab and move this up, say if we go over here, when the audio reaches around 50, where we have like this um, marker, we're increasing it from 50, we're going up to pretty much negative 25. So this pretty much, uh, that's how it works, right? So if I play this. Some sugar in there as well. And then uh, to sort of hold everything together, we have a combination of. Yeah, you can see how much it increased the volume there, right? So that's the thing, the cool thing about um, this filter. You're always gonna have a hard limiter. I always put like the hard limiter at negative four, right? Make sure you do that before you start editing audio. Forgot to mention that in the beginning of this video, but yeah, definitely add a hard limiter. So since my limiter is at negative four, I'm gonna right click the top uh, keyframe up here, go to edit point, the output signal here. Since that's at zero, we want to reduce the talent to negative four. That's what I do because since that's my limiter, I pretty much want all the audio. It wants to start reaching negative four to get reduced, right? That's how like the processing works. All right, so we go to an area of the timeline where Paul's not speaking. There's only room noise. Uh, pay attention to the audio meters here. Move that. So he's not speaking here because he's pouring uh, some liquor into a spray bottle. Oh, I did it. We eventually want to use. So you can see here, pretty much it's silent, right? Spray bottle. Oh, I'm sure I can do this. Oh, I did it. We eventually want to... Let's find another area. Hey, I said cubed. Cubed, damn you. So you can see on this, uh, on the meter, when it gets quiet and you does speak, pretty much like everything underneath 30, it's kind of like just noise. And then as soon as you start, uh, start speaking, like, uh, like the meters go over negative 30, right? I said cubed. Cubed, damn you. Yeah. See, four tablespoons, four. In with the cubed Crisco. Hey, I said cubed. cubed. All right, so the reason why we want to know that information is because uh, we want to set a keyframe to our dynamics filters to uh, on negative 30, right? And I'll show you why in a bit. So we got to click here, right click, edit point. We want these both to be at negative 30. That way, like, no, nothing's being increased or nothing's being reduced, right? So now we have like keyframe exactly at negative 30. I'll be here also at negative 30. So there's no volume that's being increased, right? So if we hit play in the same area. Crisco? Hey, I said cubed. Cubed, damn you. I have Crisco on my hands. It's supposed to be cubed. I had this cut up all nicely and then it just, just merged itself back together. See how like, all like the noise down here kind of floats around underneath negative 30? Oh, I did it. So when you start speaking, pretty much everything gets past negative 30, right? Oh, I did it. We eventually want to... Since there's a lot of like um, dynamics going on, 
part reduces his volume, he, he increases his volume, pretty much we're going to need to add more than one keyframe in this situation. Usually when Paul has like a consistent voice, I only add like one keyframe, right? In this case here, like I'll add maybe around like the lower frequencies just to boost it up a bit. And then like the resin kind of feathers out to like uh, negative four, right? I'm going to use most of this, but uh, the idea is to just spritz around the top, give a few pulses. See, but the problem is that like there's too much of uh, highs and lows, right? So when he's speaking, you can hear like the volume being increased and decreased, right? So I'm probably going to crank this up a little loud so you can hear what I'm talking about. Until you've used up all the apple jack. I should say until you use up all the apple. Okay, now that's extreme, but I'm trying to like make a point that that's pretty much what happens when we add uh, only one keyframe. So in this case, what we need to do is I want to add a second keyframe, right? And I'm going to increase this to have something similar to this, right? Basically, what I'm doing is that any lower frequencies past 30, they get boosted up a bit, right? And then there's like a consistent volume till like it gets to like around, I don't know, let's say like negative, close to like the negative 10 area. Pull jack or until it starts sort of uh, sticking to the sides and clumping together when you, when you hold it in your hand. You can kind of squish it into a little ball now, but it's still a little crumbly. So now if I turn the filter on and off, you can see like the massive difference that it does here in the audio meter, right? Uh, roughly equal parts uh, and I, I kind of clump this together again you don't want to squeeze it together too much because you still want it to be kind of crumbly but you're just you're just getting it sort of shaped into a ball and now I have covered uh, both of my dough balls with plastic wrap and now I'm realizing a couple different things one uh, I used Applejack just sort of by default and because my okay so you can hear how much it boost up the volume a little bit right now I'm probably gonna reduce this a little bit you kind of don't want to use too much um compression because then it starts sounding bad right but if you listen to it there's still a bit of a sharpness to it in the sense of like the the spikes the volume increase and decrease is very abrupt right so actually this filter down here has this thing called a spline curve and if you see it kind of like it smooths out like the compression right so instead of having um jagged and like uh increases and decreases in the volume by hitting the spline curve it smooths everything out so instead of being like that abrupt you know increase and decrease there's like a gradual increase and decrease in the volume. My recipe has it on there, but that's actually more for an apple pie version of pie crusts. And in fact, for the chocolate cream, I probably should have just gone with water. And you can go with cold water instead of, you don't have to use apple jack. And so yeah, there you go. Now it sounds a lot better, right? It's not that abrupt, abrupt increase and decrease in volume. I would be fine as is, but I'm actually going to be making this crust recipe two more times for a total of six dough balls because I am making apple pie too, but not today. So what I'm going to do is make one more pair of these. Yeah, that's basically it. So anyways, if uh, you find the video helpful, definitely you know, leave a like and a comment. Let me know if there's something you don't understand and I'll get back to you and help you out and all this stuff, right? Um, there's a link in my description. So if you find this tutorial helpful for my PayPal, if you want to you know, hook it up with the coffee, I'll be more than happy to uh, you know, accept the coffee from you guys, right? I really appreciate any help like that. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching and take care and peace.